So we were writing this sentence. Let me read again so that you continue. The sentence was, if the application is not dismissed, if the application is not dismissed, the court may give directions regarding evidence to be provided. The court may give evidence regarding, sorry, I don't know why I'm repeating that. It should, the court may give directions. The court may give directions regarding evidence to be provided or may adjourn or may adjourn the proceedings or may adjourn the proceedings to allow gathering of more evidence or may adjourn the proceedings to allow gathering of more evidence of more evidence to allow gathering of more evidence. Uh, another sentence is that on hearing the petition, on hearing the petition, the court may, the court may semicolon in point number one, give permission to continue, give permission to continue. Number two, refuse the permission to continue and dismiss the claim, refuse. Refuse the permission to continue and dismiss the claim. And dismiss the claim. Number three, adjourn. Adjourn the proceedings. Adjourn the proceedings. Okay, so let's look at this question of uh, December 2021, question 1B. December 2021, question 1B. December 2021, question 1B. Inasema, explain the meaning of the term derivative action. Explain the meaning of the term derivative action. We already have defined that. Natukasema, it is a court proceeding that is instituted by a member of a company on behalf of the company. On behalf of the company. So that's what we call a derivative action. So we have said it's a proceeding by a member of the company in respect of a cause of action vested in the company seeking relief on behalf of the company. So that is the definition. Uh, number two, we are told, identify three possible defendants. Three possible defendants in a derivative action claim. To Mesema, case, you can take the director to the court. I'm a third party. Like now, the example I've given you here, you can take the director in charge of studies or in charge of finance, and then you take the student. Either separately. Kila ustaki director wa chana na mwanafunzi. Ama ustaki mwanafunzi wa chana na director. Ama wata wawili upeleke kotini. So that's why we have the third one. Determine three possible orders that the court might issue upon hearing uh, an application for permission to continue a derivative action. So the court can give three possible orders. One, they can uh, give permission that the derivative action is delay. That's why you hear some people when they have been taken to a court of law, the judge Akisema so and so has a case to answer. Recently I saw them declare the same uh, in regard to the former Kiabu governor, Waititu. 
wamesema wakasikiza wakasema the governor has a case to answer so that means the court has given permission to continue sasa case yanze then they can dismiss like what they did with the deputy president uh, they said that the deputy president does not have a case to answer and many other fellows that followed if you follow politics the other one is that they can uh, adjourn the proceedings so i say hapa we are not able to decide now but let's adjourn and they keep on adjust, adjourning and adjourning postponing and so on Aya, let's look at may 2021 question 3a May 2021, question 3A. May 2021, question 3A. May 2021, question 3A. In Asema, with the specific reference to derivative actions, define the term derivative claim the term derivative claim na tumesema this is a court proceeding by a member of a company in respect of a cause of action vested in the company seeking relief on behalf of the company as a definition number 2 identify two causes of action with respect to which a derivative claim might arise causes of action why these guys can be sued i have given you four reasons uh, one there is breach of duty Number two, there is breach of trust. Number three, there is actual or proposed negligence. And number four, they have failed to protect the interest of the company. And then uh, finally, to now raise or highlight three outcomes that might arise upon the court hearing the application of a derivative action. So the outcomes that can come out, one, we may say that they can grant that the claim continues or they can refuse and dismiss it, obviously with reasons, or they can adjourn. So that's good for that. Let us now, well, that brings us to the end of uh, our topic number three, topic number three, and to the start of our next topic number four. So we want to begin but topic number four. Topic four, which is called shares. Topic is called shares. Okay, we begin with introduction. We begin with introduction. And we write that in general language, in general language, a share means a unit of ownership in a company. A share means a unit of ownership means a unit of ownership in a company first of however however the companies act the companies act defines a share in the following ways. However, the Companies Act defines a share in the following ways. Number one, a share is a share in the share capital of the company. A share is a share in the share capital 
of a company. A share is a share in the share capital of a company. The second definition is a share is a right to share. A share is a right to share in the capital of the company. A share is a right to share in the capital of the company. Number three, a share is a right to share. A share is a right to share in the profits of the company to share in the profits of the company. The right to share in the profits of the company All the liability to contribute. All the liability to contribute. The ability to contribute to the losses or debts of the company. To the losses or debts of the company. And number four is that a share is an obligation to contribute. A share is an obligation. Is an obligation to contribute to the debts and expenses of the company. Contribute to the debts and expenses of the company and expenses of the company in the event of liquidation. In the event of liquidation. So those are the four definitions of a share when it comes to the Companies Act. And we are saying in the general language, the common man's language, a share is simply a unit of ownership. I am an owner in a particular place. But when it comes to the Companies Act, it looks at a share in four ways. One, that it is a share of uh, the share capital. You, you, the share capital of that company, you have a part there. Number two, it is a right to share. In case your capital in Agawanyo, maybe your company in Afungwa, you have a right to share. That's also a share. And then number three, when the company makes profits or losses, you have a right to share in those profits. So that is still a share. And number four, in case the company is incurring expenses and uh, it is getting into debt, you have an obligation. A shareholder has an obligation to contribute to those losses or rather to those expenses and uh, the debts. Good. Let's look at features of shares. Features of shares. What are some of the features of shares? Features of shares. One is an interest measured in a sum of money. An interest measured in a sum of money, an interest measured in a sum of money. Number two, an interest having diverse rights. An interest having diverse Rights. Number three, 
the holder has certain rights and duties. The holder has certain rights and duties. Number four, transferable and heritable. Transferable and heritable. Someone can inherit. Number five, movable property. Movable property. Number six, must be numbered. Must be numbered. Must be numbered. Must be numbered. So those are the features that you will find when it comes to shares that it is a unit of interest. And this unit is measured in terms of money. So we are able to say that we are going to share stano because we merit a million tano. I'm going to merit a shilling tano. Then it has diverse, very different rights as a share. Then the holder, when you hear share, are going to duties and rights. We shall be looking at that. And we looked at the duties and rights of members. It, it, it can be transferred. It can be inherited. It is a movable property. You can move with it without selling. And uh, it must have a number. It must be numbered. Let's now look at classification of shares. 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 So number one, we have ordinary shares. Ordinary shares. And write that these are shares which do not have any special rights. These are shares which do not have any special right. First up, they carry voting rights. They carry voting rights. First up, they are entitled to any surplus asset. They are entitled to any surplus assets in a winding up. Any surplus assets in a winding up. So stop. They do not have a fixed rate of dividend. They do not have a fixed rate of dividends. First stop. They only get residual dividends. They only get residual dividends. Residual dividends. That is dividends that remain. Dividends that remain after preference shares have gotten their dividends. Dividends that remain after preference shares have gotten their dividends. Full stop. Ordinary shares are also known as equity shares. Ordinary shares are also known as equity shares. 
because they represent owners of the company. They are also known as equity shares because they represent owners of the company. So that is about the ordinary shares. Uh, we are saying that they have uh, no special rights. They have no special treatment, but they have the voting. They are the ones who vote. Then they do not have a fixed rate of dividend. And we are saying they only get dividends after the preference shares were made power. And this is because they represent the owners. The owners get a share after all the other persons have been given what they were supposed to be given. So they are called uh, equity shares. Okay, just a minute. Okay, sorry for that. Some people are leaving for school. We had to save by. Okay, so we proceed. Eh? Uh, now let's look at uh, number two, preference share. Preference shares. Preference shares. Reference shares, and uh, we write that these are entitled to a fixed rate of dividend. These are entitled to a fixed rate of dividend based on a nominal value. Based on nominal value. They are divided into various categories as follows. They are divided into various categories as follows. Roman one, cumulative, cumulative or non-cumulative. Cumulative or non-cumulative shares. And we explain that cumulative preference share or cumulative preference shares are the ones are the ones whose any shortage of dividends, whose any 
shortage in dividends must be made up must be made up out of the profits must be made up out of the profits of succeeding years of succeeding years of succeeding years post up non cumulative preference shares non cumulative preference shares only get only get to be paid dividends only get to be paid dividends for the year only get to be paid dividends for the year which dividends have been declared for the year which dividends have been declared Uh, number two is participating or non-participating. Participating or non-participating. Participating or non-participating. And we write that participating preference shares, participating preference shares get, get a share, get a share of any surplus profit, of any surplus profit. But none participating, but none participating, they do not get the share of any surplus profit. But none participating do not get a share, do not get a share in the surplus profit. Number three, convertible or non-convertible. Convertible or non-convertible. And we write that convertible preference shares, convertible preference shares are the ones which can be converted, are the ones which can be converted to ordinary shares, are the ones which can be converted to ordinary shares. Full stop. Non convertible preference shares, non convertible preference shares cannot be converted to ordinary shares. Cannot be converted to ordinary shares. Number four is redeemable. Redeemable or non redeemable. Redeemable or non redeemable. And we write that redeemable preference shares. 
mean redeemable profit and shares can be bought back by the company. Can be bought back by the company. That is, the holders can be refunded back their money. That is, the holders can be refunded back their money. Can be refunded back their money. So stop. Irredeemable preference shares. Irredeemable preference shares. Cannot be bought back by the company. Cannot be bought back by the company. So that is what you're calling preference shares. Actually, in the world of shareholding, there are two main types of shares, the ordinary and the preference. Now, the ordinary, as I've already said, eh? They are owned by the owners or they are held by the owner of the company. And these ones, they never get a refund. They are owners, perpetual owners. But per preference, preference, they are owned by people who are not real owners of the company. We call them quasi owners. It's like they are debt, uh, they, they are creditors. The company some money. So at some point, they get dividends and at a point they can be refunded back their money. So we have those which accumulate. To accumulate means eh, if, for example, the year 2020, the dividends were not paid. 2021, dividends were not paid. 2022, dividends were not paid. But now we are paying in the year 2023. And assume that every single year, uh, the dividends was 10 shillings. So the but uh, the cumulative preference shareholder will get dividends one, two, three, four. So you will be paid 40 shillings. Because the year that he missed will be compensated. But non-cumulative, analipwa two only for the year when you come back kind of profit. So you analipwa only 10. Then we have the participating. These are the guys who can enjoy after they get their normal. Remember to mention that the preference shares are paid on a rate basis. So if they're paid on a rate basis in a profit baki, they can also be invited to share. They are called participating. But kama umeambiwa ile umepata rate ni fixed, you imetosha, then you are non-participating. Convertible are the ones we can convert to ordinary shares uh, so that these guys now become full owners, complete owners. Those which cannot be converted, we call them unconvertible. Redeemable are the ones that we can refund back their money. Redeemable, we cannot refund back. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so number three, number three, they are called equity. Equity shares, equity shares, and we like that these are all other shares except preference shares. These are all other shares except 
preference shares. Accept preference shares. Okay, I think that is very, very clear. Next is employee shares. Employee shares. Employee shares. Once again, or let me let me let me terminate at this point to join again. Your Twitter and employee shares. Log in again. <laughs> 